Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I am your host, Rob. And it feels like it's it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while since I said I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Stick to the task at hand, Rob. Been a while since it feels... Been a while. <laughs> Are we going to do this right now? My God. It's been a while. It's been a while. Okay. In everything I can <laughs> Caleb's coming back, right? I gotta be done, I gotta be done. Uh, Caleb left for like a second to go by me red one. I told him I was gonna be recording this intro, and like if he came back and found out that I was just singing It's Been a While the whole time. <laughs> He's gonna be shaking his head. I gotta play like I've been recording this whole time. And that's, my friends, how you start a YouTube channel. So uh, thank you so much for subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. Nothing going on here. I've been recording the video the entire time. I've gotten very far in it. <laughs> it's the fastest YouTube video I've ever recorded in my life. No more talking. You know, sometimes I go so far into a bit that I legitimately don't remember what, what the last thing I said was. So give me a sec. And it feels like it's it's been a while. It's been a while. Oh, that's right. <laughs> So it's been a while since I've done a talking head video, mostly because I like to get out and experience life and walk around and I like to amp up the dynamics of my videos. But today I wanted to talk about starting a YouTube channel. It's around the beginning of the, uh, you know, the, the year, usually 2022, whenever a bunch of YouTubers are like, if I was gonna start a YouTube channel in 2022, here's exactly what I would do. If you're looking to start a YouTube channel in 2022, watch this video first. Uh, this is kind of that, although we're in April now, so it's like, I feel like I did miss the boat a little bit, but this will be general advice for you if you want to start a channel but specifically what I want to talk about are the three different stages that you're gonna be going through as a content creator as you grow your platform so for me just for reference at this current moment I have about 162,000 subscribers I started with zero <laughs> as most YouTube creators usually do and I've kind of like seen a little bit of everything. I've evolved as a content creator. I've done things very differently at different subscriber points from editing to gear, to camera work, to quirks, to just everything that you see on the Raw Belt channel. It's really been an evolution. Like my videos are consistent. It's always me as the host here. Caleb has been editing for the channel for a very long time too. It's been 84 years. So it's still the channel that you know and love, but if you really go back from the very beginning, like let's just go ahead and play some tape here. I started with an iPhone, okay? Okay, and it was pretty bad. But then I did another video and it was also on an iPhone. It was also pretty bad. And then I did a third video and it was also with an iPhone and it was shot what I call nips up where the framing is just like very, very, very bad. But that video ended up taking off. And that was the first viral video I ever had and it was shot on an iPhone. And I had shot several videos at that point with like new, nice, fancy cameras. And the one that was shot on my iPhone was the one that went viral. So when it's all said and done, it's not really about the gear that you have, though it does help. It's a tool. It's an instrument to make your channel better, but with all that said, See, I feel like Graham always says. So with all that said, you guys, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. And remember, you can get two free stocks when you sign up for a public using my link down below. I thought that was pretty good too. I don't know, Graham, but uh, he seems like a nice guy. All right, moving on. So when all is said and done, gear is very important. It is a tool, but it is not everything. But I do want to talk about the character development that you, the entrepreneurial journey you have as a content creator, and then the different gear that's associated with the three different stages. All right, so you're seeing all the beautiful like lighting, and all the fancy like widgets and lights and the hair light and the nice light behind me and a plant and like my YouTube light. Like this is all a very simple YouTube set that took me 10 minutes to curate and it looked good enough and I never changed it. But now I wanna bring it back. I wanna go back to basics. So I'm gonna start with stage one here and everything that you're gonna need to properly launch your channel. So stage one, you're getting started and you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, I wanna be a YouTuber. I'm gonna go buy a nice fancy camera. I'm gonna get all this gear. I'm gonna get lights. I'm gonna get a ring light. We get in our head and then guess what? You start thinking about all the gear that you need and all the editing tools that you need and all of the programs and you wanna get a laptop and you think about it and then you start mathing it out and you're like, wow, this stuff is gonna cost me like two, three thousand dollars to even get started. All right, maybe I'll save up for it. And then guess what? You never actually save up for it and you never start a YouTube channel. And really before we get too far into it, but I just want to show you what it sounds when I'm just speaking into the iPhone here, okay? Sounds pretty good to you, but I just want to show you the simplicity of a microphone and how you can step up your content game with one very simple and affordable investment. 
Okay, so now I'm speaking through my lav mic here. As you can tell, it's a world of difference. And while you might have been down to listen to me with the iPhone quality, this is a lot more aesthetically pleasing to your ears. Because now you get to hear my sweet, sweet, buttery voice. So here are the things you're gonna need to get started out in stage one, the very beginning of your journey. Compile them in this little PDF right here so that you can just download it, click add to cart and buy all the gear. So a good friend of mine by the name of Caleb told me that the best camera in the industry is the one that you have on you. So what I always recommend to the people that are wanting to start a YouTube channel is to start with your iPhone and really just give it a solid year of recording and posting every single week and decide if you even like you do before you go and spend money on a nice fancy camera. You definitely want to invest in a good microphone as we talked about earlier. My philosophy here is that people are willing to put up with bad video for you know a very long time but they're not necessarily willing to put up with like bad audio. It's not going to cost you very much. It's called the lav mic. This was $20. It's a purple panda and it's going to be the best first investment that you're ever going to make when you're starting your YouTube channel. And as far as the editing is concerned, don't worry about Premiere Pro, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, any of that stuff. So many people get wrapped up in the editing and they're like, I don't know how to edit. And then the, maybe they might get Premiere Pro and then they get so confused and so overwhelmed by that platform that they just quit altogether because editing is really hard. Start out with iMovie. Go start out with Movie Maker. Literally, iMovie is how I got my start on YouTube. iMovie is super easy. It'll take you five minutes to learn. Movie Maker, same thing. So we just came from outside and I wanted to actually head back in the studio and show you how all of this looks with the iPhone, you know, when you're properly lit, because I'm sure it looks pretty good right now. And now I want to show you what it looks like when you step up your camera game just a little bit and when you upgrade. And for me, that upgrade was the Canon M50. Let's get into stage two here, and this is really where you've somewhat developed your platform a little bit. Stage one is really about figuring out what you want your YouTube channel to be. You're getting your first set of subscribers. Maybe it's your first thousand, maybe it's your first 10,000. You've really evolved past being a newbie YouTuber. Now, when you decide you've exited stage one of being a newbie YouTuber, I can't really say for certain that's gonna really be on you, but I'll say that for me, I think um, at this point, I was six months into my content journey and I had just gotten like my first thousand subscribers and I had, you know, obviously I was still new. I'm still like, a newbie YouTuber, but it was the day that I decided to actually buy the camera that I'm recording on right here, the Canon M50. And I remember just overthinking this decision so much because I was, I was really broke and I was really cheap. I wasn't like really broke at that time, but it was super, super, super cheap. And so I remember I was begging my wife. I was like, babe, can I buy this new camera? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, but look, let me tell you, if I buy this camera, it's going to make my YouTube videos look so much better and my channel is going to grow. And she's like, okay, go ahead. I'm like, no, no, just hear me out. And she was like, dude, just buy the camera. And it's because I was just so scared to invest in myself because I was like, what if I spend 500 bucks on this camera and the channel never succeeds? I ended up actually buying this camera with credit card points. And the day that it came in, and I remember I got home and I was like, oh, I'm a YouTuber now. Like I had truly decided that for myself that day that I was in this for the long haul. And that's when I really feel like I moved into stage two of being a YouTuber was the day that I bought this camera because that was the day that I just made that commitment to myself. And you know what, funny enough, it was really that day where I felt like my YouTube channel did change. That was probably four months into my YouTube journey. That's when the tiny house video that I was telling you that the first viral video I ever had took off. Then my other tiny house video took off and then YouTube made me creator on the rise. And effectively in stage two, I went from a thousand subscribers to about 25,000 subscribers in the span of like one to two months. So for me personally, that's when I considered myself getting into stage two. And that's like the decision that you are going to be a YouTuber. That's what stage two really is. It isn't necessarily about gear, how many subscribers you have or anything like that. It's just the day that you make the commitment that this is what you're going to do. So now kind of getting into the nitty gritty here, right? I think that it's totally fine once you make that decision that you want to be a YouTuber to go ahead and upgrade your camera. The Canon M50 is great, but really like your first First camera can be like $500 ish. I don't think you need to go too much more expensive, but if you want, you can, you can go 500 to 1200 bucks. If you are serious about being a YouTuber, if you're like, I'm doing this rain or shine, you may as well just get a decent camera because strap in your journey is about to get a lot crazier from here. And this is where you're going to be upgrading a lot of the different gear components of your setup, maybe getting a beefier tripod, a better microphone. So right now we're using the Rode VideoMic NTG. Again, I've compiled all of this in this little PDF right here. You can just download it, add whatever you want to your cart and buy it, depending on what stage you're in. And then obviously, not to show too much of a road, but I got the Rode Go mic, and this is like a wireless Bluetooth mic that connects, and you can actually put this on the top of your camera. And that's if you want like a more precise, closer sound. It gets rid of a lot of the echoes that you might hear in here versus going to this shotgun mic, which is still pretty good, but it's a little bit more boomy. And again, that's just because my studio doesn't have a lot of cloths or dead bodies to soak up the sound. So that's kind of checking the boxes on the gear side of things. Let's get into editing a bit. So here's 
here's where you may want to consider upgrading your editing just a bit. So remember I started with iMovie. I did that for really the majority of my self-editing career. When I was editing my own videos, you can see here, okay, and I edited this. And good God, this, I thought this was funny. Yep, and this one, this one tanked. But yeah, I edited all of that on iMovie because really it's just cutting, making splices, cuts. I'll do some Ken Burn, you know, kind of zooming in on my face little by little. I might add a little insert here and there, a little super, but it really wasn't anything too fancy. And I was really into Daniel Schiffer at the time and he's like very big into editing and Manny Hoposia and they were all into Final Cut Pro at the time. So I actually bought Final Cut Pro. I think it's like $150, 300, really? It's $300 because I'm a big spender. And that's where I really started cracking down on the nuances of editing, it was actually pretty easy to move to Final Cut Pro. I think it's like Final Cut Pro X. It was easy to move into that from iMovie because it's it's Apple. So it's basically simple Apple to like more complicated Apple. What can we do for that? Make it a computer. <laughs> Or we'll workshop in a joke. Life. See, this is how we workshop our edits. Just, just like what you just yeah. saw. And now you're gonna see the final iteration. I think you could stay with uh, iMovie if you really want to, if, if it's like working for you. It really just is gonna depend on your style, I think. If you're like a vlogger and you're just doing cuts of yourself, iMovie's fine. If you're doing more complicated supers and you're doing fancy animations and you're just starting to kind of get extra bougie with your editing, you're probably gonna need to step up to a Final Cut Pro, a Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve, which is free actually. It's just a little bit more complicated on the interface side of things. So now here was the big change for me in stage two, because I actually started making some money on the channel and it was enough to where I was like, pretty excited about the amount of money that I was making. I was like, wow, it's like 300 bucks a month or 400 bucks a month or 500 bucks a month. I think finally when I became monetized, like the first month of monetization I hit, I was like $6,500 or something like that, which is absolutely crazy. It's not normal, but with the whole YouTube creator on the rise, I got a bunch of eyeballs on my page and it really just boosted up my ad revenue. But one thing that really changed for me that took me into stage three was I decided to hire an editor. What was his name? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, actually, no, Caleb, the guy that's been editing since the very beginning, kept like sending me text messages or DMs when I would post stuff about YouTube. He'd be like, come on, man, let me edit a video for you. And I was like, this is true. Is not true. Yes, it is. So anyways, Caleb was begging me to, to edit for the channel. He saw that I was growing and he was like, I gotta get in on this. And uh, I was like, no, he said, come on, it'll be fine. And I was like, man, you don't know what you're in for. <laughs> And he did it. And he still doesn't really. This is just the beginning. So I was like, fine. Like, I was like, great. Yeah, uh, how much for this first one? He's like, free. And then he edited the video. And of course, you can follow me at Rob Bill. <laughs> what does this keep happening? Go away. Two worlds collide, revelations. That was the first time I was professionally edited against like myself. That was, I was editing my, myself. And then Caleb was like an actual professional editor. And I remember I watched the video on the couch with my wife. It went live on YouTube. And my wife and I were just like, wow. And she was like, um, can you just edit all of your videos? And I was like, first of all, ouch. Second of all, man, that would be crazy. And then we worked it out. And then I was like, man, what would it take for you to edit for me like more? And he was like, ah, and we, we agreed on it. And I really decided that day that I wasn't really planning to make money on YouTube. I just wanted to kind of invest it into more gear editing and all that kind of stuff. And so that was the day that I decided, okay, not only am I gonna be a YouTuber, but I'm also gonna just dedicate all the resources from the YouTube AdSense to just expanding my YouTube channel and my brand and everything like that. And it worked and it was such a great investment. Thank Thank you very much, Caleb. We appreciate your service here. Everybody comment down below how much you love Caleb. And thank him too. Thank him for all the countless hours that he puts into the channel. And that was really what took me into stage three. So now I think it's appropriate to switch cameras to the camera that I've been using ever since I really feel like I've graduated to stage three of being a YouTuber. And that's the Sony FX3. And now we get into the final stage. And really, it's not necessarily like the final stage. Like once you reach here, you're done. You know, I just, I'm, this is the stage that I'm in. And it's what feels to me like the final stage because I have such a clear perspective on what I want out of my YouTube channel, who I want to be as a YouTuber. Well, I guess that's not necessary. I'm trying to figure that part out still. But I, I have so much more perspective than I did when I first started my YouTube channel. And stage three is, you know what you're doing. Finally, kind of, like for the most part. We don't, we can't really predict what the YouTube gods want, but you at least know what your channel's about 
out, you already figured out your niche, you know who your audience is, you have subscribers, you have fans, you have super fans. If you're still watching to the very end right now, you're a super fan, so I appreciate you. If you're a super fan, you know what to do. Let me know down below so that I know you are because I appreciate each and every single one of you. But this is where I think because you know kind of what your channel's about, what you want it to be, you can start splurging a little bit more on gear. So right now, I'm shooting on the Sony FX3. It's about a $4,000 camera. Previous to this, I had a Sony a7C that was like a $1,700 camera. I owned it for about a month, and in that month, I think I moved into stage three, and I said, okay, I'm a YouTuber now. I make money on YouTube. I make money from a bunch of things that YouTube has done for me. So I'm just gonna, why, why own this $1,700 camera when I can just go buy a nice $4,000 camera? I mean, I'm gonna do this forever. Why not just invest in like what I want right now? But I landed on this, the Sony FX3. I don't have a large desire right now to buy a nicer camera. If I, what, if, what would I get next? Like the Sony FS6? Six and a half hours later. Uh, so me and Caleb just riffed on this for like seven minutes and I think we decided that for now, this camera setup that you see right here, barring a couple of different lenses and everything, it's pretty much plenty for what I'd need on my channel. And so now in stage three, gear's taken care of. I will basically buy anything for my channel that I feel is gonna be a good investment. So if that's a new microphone, a new lens, new lights, new tripod, anything that's like kind of expensive that I wouldn't have bought a year ago, I'll just buy it. I don't care. It's a business expense and it makes the channel better. Not too long ago, Caleb was like, you should get a 50 millimeter the Nifty 50 and that was a $2,000 lens and I got it and look at this doesn't this look so good I mean look how crispy I look you really can't beat it and that is for me the best $2,000 I've ever spent on gear because that lens can go on so many cameras that are cheaper than this one and still make me look that good that's true, right? So uh, that actually brings us to the next point of this is all the stuff about gear and okay, should I get the 50 millimeter or the 35 millimeter or the 60 millimeter? Should I go wide? Should I go in? Should I get the bokeh that's like 1.2? It doesn't matter. No one at home notices ever. You know what? The first time that anyone's ever noticed anything about my picture quality was when I got the 50 millimeter lens. That was the first time ever that I got comments that were like, whoa, that camera quality. And I had been shooting on the Sony FX3 for like eight months at that point. So that just goes to show you that the difference between my cameras, no one's ever even noticed, but when I got a really nice lens, people noticed. So my opinion, spend the money on glass, not on the camera body. So we're establishing that gear, stage three, spend the money, splurge. If you if you make money on AdSense and money is no longer necessarily an issue, go ahead and do it. Stage three is also where you're established enough to where you're willing to throw Hail Marys out there and just put out a bunch of different pieces of content to see how they relate. And I do this all the time on the channel. And you know what? Most of the time, those experiments don't pan out. But I've had a couple of videos that I really just put out there as an experiment, like what they don't don't tell you about quitting your nine to five job or the harsh reality of making a million dollars a year that no one tells you about. Those videos were me experimenting with the content and those really took off for my channel. Not like viral or anything like that, but they got like 50, 60, maybe 70,000 views, which is pretty significant for my channel size. And that was really surprising to me because, because it was such a large departure from my niche of Airbnb and real estate. So for me, I'm always still experimenting. Like I do reaction videos of like the world's weirdest Airbnbs. That tanked. I've done Airbnb stories. That is tanked. I've done a video on wholesaling before, that tanked. I've done a vloggy video on what it's like to shoot a TV pilot. I thought that was gonna go super well. That tank, so, you know, at this point I have like a pretty loyal audience and so I know like, whatever, you know, my everything that I wanna shoot and put out on the channel is not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but I know that I have a strong enough following to sustain experiments like that. And that's really my favorite part about stage three is, okay, cool, like, I'm not so scared of adhering to my channel niche the way I was in stage one and stage two. Now I'm like, okay, who cares? <laughs> like, I'm just gonna do whatever I want. And if people watch it, great. And if they don't, whatever, I'll give them what they want next week. And that's kind of what this channel is becoming more and more. I'm just throwing darts at the wall of content that I'm happy to make. Now I'm always gonna be sticking to my niche like Airbnb and talking about that kind of thing. I just sometimes I wanna do this kind of video and honestly, this video is probably tanking as we speak. You know, who cares, whatever. If there's 3,000 people that watch this, then I'm relatively certain that the 3,000 people that are watching this got some level of value from this video. Maybe that's arrogance, but I feel like, you know, I wish I had a video like this to watch when I was first getting started. And kind of another point here with stage three, now that I've figured it out, is now I kind of know the formula to success. Like I know it's about putting content out there. I know that it's consistency. And now I'm ready to really level up the amount of content that I'm putting out there. So now I'm considering what it looks like to bring on more editors, sorry Caleb, you'll be their boss, don't, don't worry, but more editors to kind of help me put out a lot more content on YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, TikToks, and really kind of leveling up the team, a social media manager that's just making sure that I'm putting out a ton of content out there. Now I'm not talking like going full Gary V, you know, I'm not like, why aren't you making more content on TikTok? Because you got a hustle? 
I'm not talking about going all out Gary Vee or anything like that, but I do want to up my content. I figured out how to shoot it, how to tell a story, how to make a quality video, how to do titles and thumbnails, how to craft a hook that captures my audience to listen to the stories that I have to say. And so I guess that's really where we end today. Before we wrap up though, I do want to show you for reference what all three camera setups look like starting from iPhone to Canon M50 to Sony FX3. And so you can see this has been an evolution for my channel. Just go to the very beginning of my catalog and click every single month and just see how my stories have changed. See how my videos have changed, how the audio has changed, how my storytelling has changed. And you're gonna see that it's been a journey. It's been a journey that has taken me two years to figure out and I'm really excited to see what my channel looks like two years from now. I hope deep down inside that it looks nothing like the channel that you see today. That it's not just Airbnb, it's not just real estate, but it's also YouTube and it's also entrepreneurship and showing you how to make money and showing you how to make content. And just like whatever the heck I feel like filming on any given day that I wake up and say, hey, I'm gonna do random shit today. That's the cool thing about finding your voice on YouTube is it doesn't really matter what you say on your channel because it's people are still tuning in to listen to your voice no matter what story it is you have to tell. Man, is that like really profound sounding? Yeah, that was like for being off the cuff, honestly, that was pretty cool. I guess, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what if we, we watch this back and it's like, that made no sense. Uh, I, that's kind of how my channel is anyways. It never makes any sense. So again, I don't really think stage three is the final stage. In fact, I think there's stages four, five, and six and seven and eight and nine and 10, but I'm in stage three today. And I don't know when I'm gonna get to stage four and I don't really care because I'm having a lot of fun in stage three right now and figuring out the business of YouTube and, and how to monetize YouTube and how to monetize my audience and how to make money doing the things that I love and telling the stories that I love so that I can keep investing in the YouTube channel so I can tell more stories and be my weird goofy self every single week. So yes, uh, what do you guys think? Stage one, two, three, where are you at? Are you in stage one, two, and three right now? And if you're a bigger YouTube uh, and you feel like you're in stage four, five, six, seven, or eight, please leave a comment down below. Tell me what that's been like. Connect with me. I always feel like I'm leveling up by talking to other YouTubers that have been doing it for longer that have bigger platforms for me. And I just feel like I evolve the moment I like have a good conversation with another creator. So, so that's gonna be my advice for you. If you're in stage one, two, or three, find someone that's in the stage right after you so that you can learn from them and attach yourself to them because they've got so much to teach you. If you want my PDF of all the different gear that I use, you can, you can literally click all the different links, add to cart, buy whatever suits your budget. And I appreciate you watching. That's it. That's my mini little miniature masterclass on starting a YouTube channel and the three stages that you're going to be going through as a creator and all the gear that you're going to need. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, sorry that this is not Airbnb related for those of you that are like, what the heck, man? Why did you title this how to start an Airbnb business? And then you actually clickbaited me and it's a YouTube video. I stuck around until the very end because you told me you were, how much money you were going to make with your tiny house. And you never even disclosed it. <laughs> That'd be the worst clickbait ever if I just did it actually if I actually just made it, if I said this was an Airbnb video, but it's just a how to start a YouTube channel video. Anyway, uh, my voice is gone and I'm tired. So I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Raw Bill. Okay, thanks. Bye.